So if you take a look down at the coastlines, the, the intertidal zones are really fertile places to feed because you get all the wash up from the marine environment. If you're a terrestrial organism, you can come down at low tide, you pick all that stuff up. And you often see iguana foraging out there and eating certain things. There's certain kinds of iguana that are strictly herbivorous, other ones have a little bit more omnivory to them. And it's a, strictly an accident. Because what happens is the waves can come up quickly, hit the iguana, and pull them out into the ocean. But there's also a bunch of stuff out there that's floating around. And so if the iguana happens to get on a palm frond or something like that, they can raft on it. They can raft for hundreds and hundreds and thousands of miles. If you're a reptile, if I had a good meal before I got rafted away, pulled out to the ocean, I could exist for a month or more out there without eating anything. That's more than enough time to make it to a place like the Galapagos Islands. And that's probably how they got there in the first place. Another example are the Hawaiian honey creepers. So these are derivative of some finch that got there, probably blew in storm, same basic thing, rafted, storm activity, wherever. And it got there, as soon as it gets there, there's all this habitat to be developed, right? There's no competition, they radiate out quickly. Some are high in the trees, low in the trees, eating insects, eating seeds, on and on and on, leading to character displacements, all kinds of changes in the bills and the coloration, the behavior, morphology, and physiology. So upon introduction to new environments, ancestral species quickly evolve into an array of descendant species that differ in all three of the adaptive traits. What's really interesting is you can go to places like the Galapagos and you can actually view the adaptive radiations, trace them back in terms of evolutionary descent by developing phylogenies to see how they started at one island, radiated out through the other islands by looking at your molecular clocks and your DNA hybridization. And then what you can do is plot where it's going, and what you see is they've actually established all the islands, and now they're back retrogressing to the islands and recolonizing places that they came from. And it's amazing. There's finches actually on the Galapagos that have evolved in such interesting ways that they feed in so amazing, amazing diversity of ways. You name it, they eat it. There's actually a finch now that's a vampire finch that attacks other animals, pecks them, and then grabs the blood as a food source. That's how far it's come from the ancestral common finch that was just a seed eater of some kind, insectivore, general omnivore. All right, so let's talk about the timing of speciation in the last few minutes. Let me see, how many slides we got? I'm gonna stop right there. That's a good place to stop. We'll pick up the last couple slides and we'll get an easy day tomorrow, okay? Have a good day.